Hey guys, Star here. This is part two of the potty training video. If you haven't seen part one, then make sure you go back and watch that. And I can't wait to see your tips and tricks in the comment section below. See you later. When you are waking up every single day and you get up, it's gonna be a great day, I'm so excited. And you're waking up and you open up your child's bedroom door and you get that whiff of sack crap I'm smelling like oh my god is it on the walls is it on the toys is it in his hair I mean you get so angry because you're like oh my gosh I cannot believe that this is how I have to start my day by cleaning crap off the walls and you guys this was a huge part, and that's why I can't leave it out. I hate to talk about it, but it's so important to talk about. This was one of the things that we had to deal with on our journey. And so uh, one of the things that I want to remind you guys in um, on this journey with autism, everybody has their own journey, but one of the things I want to remind you is a lot of times as parents of children with autism and special needs, you have to first put systems in place that are going to protect our kids from themselves, okay? So you had to, I, we had to get systems in place that would protect him from him. I didn't want him to hurt himself. So I had to get systems in place immediately when I seen that this was a, a ongoing thing and for some reason the sensory of the crap and whatever, I mean, it was driving me to the moon. I was like, Lord, why have thou forsaken me? I mean, seriously, y'all, it was horrible. I mean, talk about pity parties. I was at the lowest of lows, guys. I didn't think it could get any worse because every single day I was waking up to this. So I had to put some systems in place that would uh, protect Gabriel from Gabriel. Um, of course, safety is always number one that would of course help us facilitate and, and, and help him be his best self. But at the same time, I had to keep my sanity. I have to take care of him. I have to be his mom, his, his you know, I'm in his corner. I've got to make sure that he gets everything that he needs. And you guys, I was just like, what do I do? And so one of the things that we had to do for a long time, y'all, is we had to buy, we had to buy onesies. And it, we live in Florida, okay? So it gets hot here. I didn't care if it was the dead of, of, of summer, okay? Right in the middle of summer in July, Gabriel was going to bed in a onesie. I did not care. I had to get those onesies. I had to cut them at the ankles, okay? To make, I made onesie shorts because he didn't know how to unzip and stuff. So I knew that if I put the onesie on him, he would be he wouldn't be able to dig in crap and whatever. I could not continue to wake up to that crappy situation every day. I could not continue to start my day like that. It was so depressing for me. It was it was just it was horrible. And so I I my husband was stationed in Virginia and it stayed colder in Virginia, of course, longer than Florida. And so I would be like, go to Walmart and see if you can find me some ones. I mean, I was crying out, you guys trying to find a way to fix the situation. And the only thing I could think of was onesies. I would cut them off, make uh, shorts out of them. So he had onesie shorts and he, was, he looked like um, Peter Pan, the way I would cut those onesies off. I didn't care. I cut the arms off so he had short sleeve onesies and, and tank top onesies, whatever. But the goal was just so that he it had the zipper and I wouldn't have to wake up to that crappy situation in the morning. And that was a huge, huge huge solution for a huge problem and we did that for many years and it hasn't been and probably been about one year i would say maybe a year maybe a year and a half maybe a year and a half where he graduated from onesies and got to sleep in regular night clothes because i just could not wake up like that anymore i just could not do it y'all so part of our potty training with the bowel movements was to protect him from himself because whatever sensory with the crap and the texture or whatever I hate to even talk about it but it's the truth it we had to protect him from himself with that so so 
that was our first step. And I'm trying to look to see what else I wanted to share with you guys about that because this is really, really key. So you guys know a lot of children that have autism also have gut issues. So of course you want to try to give um, your child or whoever you're caring for, make sure they have the most well-balanced diet that they can have and make sure that you're, again, writing down data. What are they eating? You know, Gabriel suffered from constipation, which goes into these potty training. And why do you, does constipation go into potty training? Well, if, if it hurts for him to go to the bathroom, then he's not going to associate going to the bathroom and the toilet as a positive thing, which he probably won't be going to the bathroom and the toilet, okay? And so we want to make this as most, the most pleasant experience as possible. And so that's why it's so key, you guys, to make sure that they uh, you're watching their diet and making sure that they don't have const issues with constipation. So about five years ago, I remember we were on a field trip with our school out of town and uh, Gabriel was severely backed up. And one of our other teachers told me about these gummy fibers that she gave uh, to one of her family members. And we started that right away. And you guys, for the past five years, I am so thankful to the Lord. We have not really had many problems with constipation at all. I can name, count them on like one hand the times that he's been constipated and usually it's because of medicines or something like that which um so gummy fibers are amazing i'll show you guys a picture either here or here of the ones that we use but we do use gummy fibers for yay the sugar-free ones i get them at costco and bj's and they are awesome i give him four gummy fibers and that extra fiber added to his diet um, it just works well so just a well-balanced diet and also, the gummy fibers has been great for us, but I am not a doctor, so make sure you ask your doctor about that, okay? I am not a doctor. This is just what I do for my kid, so anything that you hear me say is what works for us, but if you want to try this, you might want to ask your doctor about that, okay? Um, also, with um, Gabriel, he is not on any medication, okay? So um, that's another thing that can affect their stomach and their gut and potty training. If your child is on a bunch of medications from the doctor, these different medications have different side effects. A lot of them could be constipation. Some of them could be the run. So it's hard to get them potty trained in that area if they have a lot of gut issues or if the medications that they're on have those side effects. So those are some things that you can look at. Um, look at the medication bottles and see. We don't have Gabriel on medication. That's just our choice as a family. Um, we thank God that he, you know, we just have him on fiber. And, you know, if he if he has a few allergies, we'll give him some Zyrtec or something like that. So that's what we do um, over here on our end. So we always know what we're going to get. And that works for us. But you guys can do whatever, of course, you need to do for you. But make sure that you're reading the side effects. Because that, of course, if you're trying to potty train, then you might need to add Miralax or something different so that they will be able to have some regular bowel movements and it won't be a painful experience for them, especially if you're trying to potty train. Okay, what else do I want to say about potty training? What's the hardest thing about potty training a child that is uh, nonverbal? And to me, I would say it's just the fact that they cannot communicate, that they have to go to the bathroom. So even still, and even though Gabriel is, I would say, 90% potty trained, it is not because he tells me he has to go to the bathroom. It's because he goes to the bathroom on his own now at this point. We told him to go to the bathroom so many times. Eventually, now he knows to go to the bathroom. When we're out in public, he can't. He doesn't know where the bathroom is. If we are traveling, he can't say, I have to go to the bathroom. Do you understand what I'm saying? So um, that's the hardest part to me of, of uh, potty training a child that's nonverbal. So you have to, of course, here we go. You have to be potty trained. And so now when we are traveling or do something, every time we go pee, he goes to the bathroom. Every time we go to a restaurant to eat, we go in, we take him to the bathroom, we eat our food, we take him back to the bathroom. When we get back home from the restaurant, we take him back to the, he goes back to the bathroom. So those are the hardest things um, is that he can't say, 
mommy I gotta go to the bathroom and he hasn't even honestly got the sign potty for to go, to go potty like that so we try to teach him the sign we have his textbook but those as far as actively communicating and saying I have to go to the bathroom we don't have that yet and he's 12 okay going to be 13 next month. So that's the hardest part for us. But what has been the most rewarding, you guys, is the fact that even as much progress as we have made with this potty training, he feels so confident when he goes to school. He can wear his big boy underwear. I don't have to walk around with a million diapers in my purse anymore and wipes and all these extra clothes. I mean, I still keep a, keep an extra change of pants or whatever because, you know, and he, he's accidents happen however hardly ever are they happening you guys because we are really trying to make sure that we're being potty trained so that we can potty you know make sure that he's potty trained so um so the biggest biggest benefit is the pride that i i feel that he feels and knowing that he has on his big boy underwear and when we go when he goes to the bathroom in the toilet we cheer for him like never before and we make him feel super duper special even to the point where he's rocking and he's cheering for himself so it's so cool to see that um what other things do i want to share with you guys with potty training one of the other hardest parts of potty training is just the fact that you can't stop your life to do this potty training and so with this potty training extreme um, schedule most of the time like you would have to say okay we have to do this potty training session to where you have a weekend where you don't have nothing else to do or you have a week where you have nothing to do but potty train so with us being in quarantine you guys there's no better time for you to start the potty training like you can start that right now and your child can get on their way to being potty trained. I mean, this is a perfect time because you're not running from place to place. I It took us a while because we were always running. We're always so busy trying to get the speech therapy, occupational therapy, ABA therapy, this therapy, that therapy. And you're just running, running, running in this in this cycle in, in everyday life. It's a school, therapy, everything. And you, who has 8 to 10 hours where they can sit there and just do potty training. Well, now we all do. Okay, so so uh, take advantage of this time. So that's this is why this is such a great time for potty training in quarantine because everything's closed and you have nothing to do but be home. Okay, with the bowel movements, the hardest part is they are nonverbal. They can't tell you they have to go to the bathroom. So a lot of times when that you're doing um, the bowel movements, you have to look for the nonverbal cues. Do they make a certain face? Do they grunt a certain way? Do they go in a certain corner? Like Gabriel used to go upstairs and like stand on the um, banister and like kind of push. And I'm like, are you pushing? And then, are you pushing? Go to the bathroom, you know? <laughs> and so that would be what our thing. Like he would go to a certain place where he could like push his body, I don't know, to kind of push, you know, that's so graphic, but. He would go into a certain place to try to push or run upstairs to, to try to have a bowel movement. And, you know, while we were working on potty training. And so they might run into a different room or kind of hide because they don't want to do it in front of you because they know they're supposed to go in the toilet. But so they might hide from you when, when, they, have, when they know they've got to go to the bathroom. And so they'll still have a bowel movement in the diaper when they knew they were supposed to go to the toilet to do it. So you can, it, you don't see them for a second. You're like, uh-uh, you, you, Gabriel, where are you at? What are you doing? You know, so, um, but fine. So you can, you'll learn all those things as, as, um, as you're potty training. Some of the things that they do, they're doing something they ain't supposed to be doing when they don't went upstairs and they know they usually been downstairs all this time and now they got to go to the bathroom. So, um, so those are some of the things that he would do. How has it been better for us? And like I said, it's just the pride that I know that he feels when he's wearing his big boy underwear. He's proud of himself as he is going into the bathroom and being able to not have this diaper on. I mean, I know he feels so much better being able to wear his big boy underwear. And I'm like, oh my God, it feels so good for me as a mom to be able to see my son in underwear for the first time you know 12 years old to be able to see my son wearing underwear versus a diaper but I, i've seen him in a diaper for the past 11 years so now in my head i'm like oh my gosh my baby is growing up it's like something it just clicks when you see your 12 year old in men underwear you're like oh 
yeah, my baby's growing up. So it, it's, it's so surreal to be able to see that. And I'm so proud that he's growing up and that he is, you know, reaching this milestone because it's, it felt so far away for so long. And I'm here to encourage you other moms out there that might have children that are severe and nonverbal, it can happen for you too. Like you can send your child to school in big boy underwear and not a diaper and oh, it just feels so good. So, and the other thing that has been a blessing, how has it been better is financially, you guys. So nobody plans on having it. First of all, nobody plans on having a child with special needs. Second of all, nobody plans on having a child with special needs in diapers till they're 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and, and then for a lifetime. Nobody plans on that. And for so long, diapers were not covered under insurance. So we have a military family, and I'm telling you, just this whole, being a military family, a middle class family with a special needs child, you guys, it is like, oh, oh my gosh. I Everybody thought we had money because we're in the military. We're a military family. And I'm like, oh my God, but I feel so broke all the time because diapers, they were eating up everything. The diapers, the wipes, all the extra special therapies that cost all this money and we had no money for that. And that's a whole other video, you guys. But if you want a video on how to make it and how to find resources as a middle class family <laughs> with a child with special needs, that's a whole other topic. Leave some comments in the description and I can do a video on how we were able to get connected to resources that helps us as a middle class family because they say you make too much money for these services so you can't get any help but then you don't make enough to pay for this stuff out of pocket so what are some ways that we can find resources so if you guys want to hold another dedicated video to that just let me know and I'll do one but I'm just telling you as a middle class family having a child with special needs autism and, I, and remember I said to do the data, so I, I knew that every three and a half days, because Gabriel went through seven to nine diapers a day, every three and a half days I was going to be at the Publix or Walmart, and it doesn't really matter because they're the same price, $19.99, okay, for the thick diapers that I needed for him, the pull-ups, $19.99 or $27.99 if I was able to get the bigger pack. And, and that all depended on money. How much money did we have? Because I had to, to make that money stretch. I mean, you talk about clipping coupons. I was clipping coupons and everything. And that's a whole other story for another day. But you guys, praise God, we made it through. And now a lot of insurance companies are covering pull-ups. So hopefully and prayerfully, um, your insurance company that you have, if you're out there watching, covers pull-ups. Um, but for me, we were going through seven to nine diapers a day, and every three and a half to four days, I was having to buy diapers. And, you know, you, that's an area that you cannot slack in. I never wanted Gabriel to be sitting in a wet diaper because I couldn't afford diapers and all that stuff. And I'm so proud to say my baby has never had a diaper rash or any type of diaper rash or diaper infection or anything. Praise God. He's never had any of that. Um, so I'm so thankful to say that. But I know that we were spending more on diapers and wipes than the light bill. Okay? So, um... And that's the reason why, guys, that's the reason why I started a nonprofit organization called the Giveaway Foundation just because I just wanted to be able to give away some diapers because that's the biggest thing I needed in my life at that time was diapers and wipes. I always tell everybody, the Giveaway Foundation was birthed from diapers and wipes, okay? And the craziest thing is a lot of my music that I write has come from, remember I said, Go get, get used to being in the bathroom. But you have to get used to being in the bathroom. And, you know, a lot of the positive music with the message that I write comes from long nights. It comes from being in that bathroom and just feeling like a failure. Like, what have I done wrong, Lord? Why come my son's not potty trained? And the devil would just be telling me he's never going to get potty trained. And one of my favorite songs that I wrote is called It's Getting Better Every Day. And I remember the devil was telling me, he's never going to get potty trained. I'm in there cleaning this, but I'm at, we're at a restaurant. Everybody else is out there eating their food. It's hot. And of course, I can't eat my hot food because I'm in the bathroom like cleaning crap. And 
the devil's just trying to tell me, oh, it's, he's never going to get better. And I had to tell that devil, devil, you're a liar. He's getting better every day. It's getting better every day. And that's one of my songs that I love so much. Because I, I had to write this stuff, you guys, to encourage myself. Because when, you know, and all the moms out there, you understand what I am saying. This is a lonely journey. You're going to clean more crap than you ever thought you'd clean. You have to <laughs> encourage yourself and know that it won't be forever, you guys. But guess what? Even if it is forever, thank you, Jesus. We have learned how to serve our children as unto the Lord. We've learned how to just um, say yes to the assignment. And for whatever reason it is that you are on your particular journey, God thought that you would be the best mom to that child. And that's the same way God feels about me to gain. And so I can relate to you from one autism mom to another. I don't understand. I don't have all the answers. But all I know is God has graced us and he's given us everything that we need to be able to be the best that we can be for our children. So hope I have one. I went on and on and on and on and on. And on and on and on. So, but anyway, you guys, take your data, be consistent, and and give them boundaries, and then open up more space and more space and more space, and you will see that soon and very soon, your child can and will be potty trained, and you'll be looking at your big boy, talking about, oh my God, you look like a grown man in those underwear, <laughs> you know. Or your little girl is going to look like a young lady in her little underwear. So I think that's so amazing. So I think that's everything I wanted to share. Yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to share, you guys. So happy potty training to you. I've got so many questions about my leggings. Yes, they are so cute. They've got the puzzle pieces all over them. And these are a part of our Autism Awareness Apparel line by Star Fields. And I'm so excited about this. This has been a dream in my heart to be able to have some Autism Awareness Apparel because, you guys, I always say they're already steering, so make a grand entrance, and these leggings help you do just that. Um, we're also going to have dresses, shirts, cardigans, and so it's going to be so much fun and some really cute things that are comfortable that we can wear on our journey with autism. So um, if you guys would like to check these leggings out, you can do so at imanautismmom.com. And I will leave a link in the description bar below. And thank you so much for tuning into this video. I have loved sharing with you some of our potty training tips. I hope that they will help you and bless you. I would love to hear some of your tips and read them in the comments below. So make sure that you do that so we can just make this an open conversation of some things that have worked for you with potty training and um, we can just make a community out of it. So be sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.